30 years ago, your driveway looked like this, lined with a wall of snow. January 17, 1994, cranking open a window, no way. The snow said you are staying inside. <laughs> <laughs> it meant no school for days as this historic snowstorm settled in around Louisville's historic buildings that said, hey, we've seen it all. As Brian Carter recorded this home video in 1994, you had to do a double take driving around Louisville, asking what street, what neighborhood is this? And finally, toward the end of it all, listen to the good news from the late WHAS radio reporter, John Asher. And this hour, LGD has fewer than 500 customers that are still offline. And welcome everyone. It's a day that many of you cherish, but most would like to forget forever. 30 years ago today, it was the winter storm of 94. The storm that brought Kentuckiana to a stop for days. And hi again, I'm Doug Profit. And I'm Shay McAllister. This is a big anniversary here at 530. We are going to take you back during this special half hour. We do have a surprise guest joining us live in just a second. Plus, the National Weather Service talks about that forecast that went back and forth. But first, we begin with meteorologist Alden German and senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton. They bring you the WHAS 11 archives 30 years ago when it stunned all of us. A generational snowstorm 30 years ago today brought record breaking snow and cold to Kentuckiana. Louisville experienced its coldest temperature ever of 22 degrees below zero and Shelbyville saw the coldest temperature ever recorded in the state at negative 37 degrees. We're taking a trip back in time to the 1994 snowstorm. January 17, 1994. Frozen in time like a snowy Pompeii, Louisville sits cold, isolated, and frustrated. It was brutal. It was a one-two punch that was devastating. Nightmare. Nearly 16 inches of snow fell in Louisville. No letting up in sight. A daily snowfall record for the city. And our plans today, folks, to stay on the air right through the thick of this snowstorm. Some communities around Kentuckiana saw even more. It started the night of January 16th. Snow was forecast but not 16 inches. I mean, we've just never seen anything like it before. Temperatures plummeted to the coldest ever recorded in the city and state, 22 degrees below zero. We've been talking about these down power lines. Power outages and burst pipes made a bad situation worse, but still more nightmares came. Travel, not advised. Traffic is not moving and it has not been moving. No one could go anywhere. We had to put our arms on the front of the windshield and wipe the snow off. The, the snowflakes were as big as Dixie cups. But they're not going any further. They're not going to make it to downtown Louisville today, and there's no telling when we'll get all this cleaned up. Louisville was crippled, and Mayor Jerry Abramson was trying to get it moving again. It was really difficult to be able to, to get the community back into movement again. And all of a sudden, you're called on to provide the services that people need in terms of access to the roads, access to the hospitals, access to the dialysis clinics, access to the schools, and literally the community came to a halt. It wasn't going to be a quick fix. Louisville was simply unprepared. People needed help, especially medical attention. This, according to former WHAS 11 news anchor Rachel Platt, is when the community began to shine. For the community, I, what I remember is when truckers and motorists were stranded on the interstate, people coming from their homes in those areas. I remember in southern Indiana, people were walking out to give them water, to give them food, to make sure that they were okay. There was a, a young girl who needed a transplant, people shoveling a lot so a helicopter could get in so she could go and get the transplant. I can't believe it, and I just say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It was a sense of community, I felt, and neighbor helping neighbor at, at, at its best. But this is probably the worst I've seen it in this town. Doug Prophet and Rachel Platt helmed WHAS's coverage starting at 5.30 that morning, providing a critical service before the time of social media to know who needed help Go. and where. Well, Rachel and I would say so-and-so so has been in their house now for 48 hours without uh, any heat and they need somebody in an SUV to go get them. We can connect you with them, you know, give us a call or whatever. And suddenly you would see 10 people show up at this person's house I got them. and rescue them. It was days before the city even started to get things moving again, by which point the community was frustrated, stir crazy and cold. Okay, we 
you know, this whole street that we've been talking to is near a road that looks great, but good luck getting to it. Most of us still can't get out of our driveways, and Kentucky interstates are still closed. Rush hour. I-65 was shut down. Louisville International Airport was closed. People were trapped in their homes. Everything stopped. We didn't have the kind of equipment and the kind of game plan to respond to 16 inches of snow and 22 below zero. Mayor Abramson even got a phone call from the U.S. Transportation Secretary demanding to know what was happening. A major economic thoroughfare was closed, both land and air. UPS, the city's largest employer, was livid. Well, once you shut down 65, even if people could get out, they couldn't get to UPS for overnight deliveries and second day deliveries. And they came to my office and said, look, if you're not going to invest to be prepared for the next snowstorm like this, we're leaving. I mean, we're leaving. Lessons were learned after that. We need to get the essential personnel to their location. Mayor Abramson visited northern cities to learn how they dealt with snow. Afterwards, plows were bought for garbage trucks, brine was introduced to the city, and street clearing plans were made for main thoroughfares and residential areas. Perhaps most important in an economic sense, the airport was equipped with a massive runway clearing fleet so airline delays would be limited. It was a lesson learned the hard way. And something else happened from that storm. Yes. Nine months later. <laughs> <laughs> That's we right. We haven't talked about that. Because that was one of the things there, that we ended up, don't you remember? There was a baby snow boom. Babies. People were snowed in for two weeks. Not everybody was watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> Although we haven't seen such a crippling snow since, the question remains, is Louisville ready for the next time? We're better placed. We've got better equipment. We'll be more quick to respond. But that was an incredibly unique situation. I think we would be better off. Would we still have problems? Yes, but I don't think we would be shut down to the extent that we were. Out of turmoil, beauty, knock on ice, and even humor could still be found years later. Amazing to me how beautiful the, the community had become. I'll give you a funny story. I went out of office um, and I'm lying in bed with my wife one, two o'clock in the morning and I hear sleet on the roof and I jump up and I turn to my wife and she says to me, you're not the mayor. It's not your problem any longer. A once in a generation snow in 1994, Louisville now waits for its next generational snow in the 21st century. Reporting in Louisville with senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton, Alden German, WHAS 11, on your side.